Summer is a great time for families and pets, but there are some hidden dangers pet parents need to be aware of, and that's where the street vet and Charlotte's Web Ambassador Dr. Quan Stewart can help. He joins us live from San Diego to share some summer pet safety advice. Good morning to you, Dr. Stewart. Thank Good you morning. so much. For, you? Great. You. Thanks so much for joining us. So they call you the street vet for your outreach, helping the homeless population take care of their pets. What's been the most surprising or actually rewarding experience helping? I, well, it is overwhelmingly rewarding. I, I wasn't sure I was expecting that. Um, and, you know, the thing is, like a lot of us, I had my own preconceptions or notions about what homeless folks are, how they came to be. And I was wrong on a lot of accounts. They're not all drug addicts or mentally ill. A lot of them are just under-resourced uh, during these really tough economically time, or economic times. And th the best part, though, is they love their pets. About one-fourth of our homeless population own a pet and they rely on them so much for support and um, they're just, they, they keep them together in so many ways and overwhelmingly take great care of their pets too. That's good, that's good to hear. And as we're watching some of this video, um, I see you out there um, checking their teeth, um, you know, their eyes, making sure they're doing well and the food as well. So what happens when you, when you find an animal that, that needs help? Well, I, you know, I literally walk the streets. I carry a medical bag um, full of a few tricks. I can, I can treat a lot of patients um, out of a small medical bag uh, with antibiotics, analgesics, vaccines, uh, toenail trimmer. And I just approach the homeless person, let them know I'm a veterinarian. I'm here to help if you'll let me at no cost. And I just kneel down and start giving attention to the pet. Wow, you're such an angel for doing that. That is so amazing. What is the biggest concerns for pets heading into San Diego summer, especially if they're living out in the streets? Well, you guys just touched on it. We're starting to hit the hot days of summer. So heat stroke, hyperthermia are a big one. I do emergency work as well. And it's just tough to see these dogs roll in uh, on a gurney or carried by their owner after suffering an episode of heat stroke. So um, quick tip, don't run them or exercise them during the heat of the day. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And then look out for the cues of heat stroke, such as an excessive um, panting or salivation. Sometimes their mucous membranes become very red. You may see them sort of cower and become non-responsive uh, or vomiting. Those are all signs of heat stroke and a reason to get in. Lastly, I'll say this about heat stroke. Our brachycephalic breeds, our snub nose or smash face breeds, they're at much higher risk for a heat stroke because they don't have the air conditioning cooling system that your normal dogs have. And, and therefore, sometimes just minutes out in the hot sun can lead to an episode. That makes sense. So we just celebrated 4th of July. Um, you know, we're hearing about, you know, the anxiety the fireworks cause for, for pets. Uh, do you think this is also affecting the homeless pets who, you know, maybe ran away from their pet owners? Yeah, it's possible. You know, I'll tell you, though, a lot of these homeless people find these pets on the streets or adopt them through a rescue, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'll tell you this about anxiety. It can come in many different forms. Dogs are no different than us. They have phobias and fears, which can act as a trigger to anxiety, or you disrupt their normal routine or pattern. That can lead to anxiety. So moving to a new home, yes, running away, of course, um, coming to see me at the veterinary office, uh, those can all be triggers for anxiety. And there's something called flooding. So sometimes a dog may experience a stressful event, and the next time it's worse, and the next time, next time it's worse, it becomes heightened each mm. time uh, it happens. So uh, again, anxiety in many different forms, we just keep an eye out for it. And before we wrap up quickly, what made you want to do this? What made you want to go out there and help the homeless with their pets? You know, I get that, that question asked a lot. I, I'm not sure. This started about eight years ago, this journey, and I just knew there was an underserved need in my community. I was a shelter vet at the time, and uh, it was on the end of the uh, recession. I just saw a huge need in my own neighborhood. I decided one day I was going to go out and address it, and I literally just started walking the streets looking for people in need. That is amazing. Um, you know, taking the, my dogs, I have two dogs, I, they're both rescues to the vet. It's expensive. So what you're doing is, um, is very special and, and thank you. Thank you for helping those who really need it the most. You're welcome. Yes, I enjoy doing it. It's hugely rewarding. And Dr. Stewart, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.
And I don't you wish you could give him a big hug? I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, it, it really is so expensive. Like, I have two small dogs, too, and, you know, they tend to have problems with their teeth. So I had to, you know, make sure both of them had surgery, dental mm -hmm. surgery. And that, that adds up. It's so expensive. And the fact that he's able to go out there on the streets and he's got his bag and he can treat most of these dogs with, you know, whatever he has in his bag is remarkable. Yeah. So, uh, you called him an angel. That's yeah. so true. Mm -hmm. He definitely is. So nice work, Dr. Stewart.